A penetration test, commonly shortened to pen test, aims to achieve four main objectives according to the Federal Office for Information Security here in Germany. Enhancing the security of technical systems, identifying vulnerabilities, confirming IT security through an external third party, increasing the security of organizational and personal infrastructure. To conduct the pen test, we can follow a process that consists of five phases. In this video, we will take a closer look at these five phases to help you understand how to proceed with a client in your future job. Interestingly, these phases can also be applied with minor adjustments to bug bounty programs. Let's start with the first phase, which is crucial for the overall success of the pen test. In close consultation with the client, the objectives of the test are defined, including the scope of the pen test. This stage is very important as it directly affects the client's satisfaction, who might otherwise have completely different and sometimes unrealistic expectations. It's also vital to comply with legal and contractual requirements to avoid potential legal repercussions. A detailed plan is developed documenting the potential risks, methodology and scope. For instance, using unapproved techniques or overlooking risks that cause a production system to fail could lead to the client seeking damages. Therefore, agreements and arrangements made during this preparation phase should be documented in a contract to prevent misunderstandings and provide a clear basis for the pen test that both parties can refer to. In the context of a bug bounty program, the pen tester, referred to as a bug bounty hunter, typically does not personally interact with organizational representatives. Instead, they consult the specific bug bounty guidelines, which clearly outline allowed and unallowed actions. Activities considered in scope are allowed, whereas out of scope activities, such as social engineering or DDoS attacks, are typically prohibited. Once the framework is clearly defined, the information gathering phase begins. This phase aims to obtain a comprehensive view of the target organization by collecting relevant information about its systems and networks. This step is often referred to as a passive penetration test. The duration of this phase can vary depending on the size and complexity of the network to be tested and requires careful planning. For instance, imagine a company that operates 200 different servers. Each server must undergo a full port scan of 65,536 ports, which can be very time consuming. Of course, these mass scans are automated, but this process may slow down subsequent steps if the necessary computing resources are unavailable or if we have to wait for the results. Besides port scanning, other measures such as mapping the software landscape and the technologies used should be considered. Therefore, you should plan for the information gathering phase to be time consuming during a pen test. So keep in mind that the information gathering phase can be very time consuming. In the third phase, the collected data is analyzed to identify vulnerabilities and associated risks. A risk analysis based on the information from the previous phase is conducted. This analysis is crucial to understand which vulnerabilities could be exploited and the potential impact of an attack. This phase should be taken seriously since active penetration steps can be very demanding and economic efficiency should be considered in a pen test. It's unwise to start testing blindly and initiate a very time consuming and costly test if the actual risk is very low. When looking at the map of all systems from the previous phase, it's advisable to focus on those with known vulnerabilities or where the pen tester has strong technical expertise. It's a common misconception that a pen test is expected to uncover a multitude of unknown exploits. Instead, the focus is more on testing a system against known vulnerabilities to ensure that it cannot be compromised using known attack techniques. For example, the now infamous Log4j vulnerability existed long before it was discovered, yet it wouldn't be accurate to say that all pen tests before its discovery were poor because they missed this vulnerability. In the fourth phase, attempts are made to actively penetrate the system. This phase is inherently risky, requiring caution. It also reveals whether the identified vulnerabilities pose real risks in practice. 
The aim is to verify whether and how an attacker could gain access to the system resources. These tests must be conducted responsibly to avoid damaging the target system. In systems with high availability requirements, the consequences of exploiting certain vulnerabilities must be carefully considered to prevent further damage. In bug bounty programs, even closer attention is required. The bug bounty hunter must ensure that they operate strictly within the defined scope to avoid causing harm. For example, some systems that perform simple processing tasks are not designed to withstand a full Nmap scan and could collapse under the resulting flood of requests. If a white box test is conducted, patches may need to be applied to crucial systems before the test to prevent system failures. This could mean that no new vulnerabilities are uncovered, although no ones may be closed. The final phase of the pen test involves compiling the test results into a comprehensive final report. This report contains detailed information about the conducted test, the exploited vulnerabilities and the resulting security risks. Recommendations for remedial measures to address the identified security gaps and improve the overall security strategy are also provided. The results and risks should be discussed with the client based on the report. It is important that the pen tester presents the findings in a clear and understandable manner so that the client can take appropriate action. The pen tester does not dictate the measures to be taken but provides recommendations. Additionally, it's important to note that a pen test is only a snapshot in time. It cannot predict the future security level of the organization and must be repeated for a renewed security assessment. In bug bounty programs, some kind of write-ups are submitted to the company, describing the problems found and how they can be reproduced. Often, specific forms are provided on the company's website, allowing the bug bounty hunter to precisely define the area where the security gap lies. This allows direct internal referral to the appropriate expert. Each of these phases is crucial for the success of a pen test and contributes to enhancing the security of an application or an entire organization. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.